let's get to Al Sharpton. Joining me now is the former prime minister of Israel, uh, Naftali Bennett. Uh, Mr. Bennett, I have repeatedly called for the release of the Israeli hostages for peaceful ceasefire. I want to be candid with you and for cautious negotiations to bring forward a two-state solution. If Al Sharpton's at least saying that he brings up in the interview several times the people dying in Gaza. But you notice he says the release of the Israeli hostages. Again, why is no one calling for the release, at least none of these people, none of these mainstream media, calling for the release of the Palestinian hostages? There are like 10,000 Palestinian hostages in Israeli prisons, many of them women and children. And no, we only want Israeli hostages freed. We don't care. We didn't care about the 5,000 hostages Israel had before Israel had before October 7th. Why should we care about them now? Is that still a realistic option to bring this terrible war and what's going on to Gaza to an end? It's not a war. It's a genocide. It's ethnic cleansing. There's no, there's no battle going on. It's just Israel raising Gaza, just b blowing it up, it, turning it into a parking lot, as many of them have said they'd like to do. Well, Reverend, there was a ceasefire on October 7th, and Hamas... And one of the things that they've clearly been instructed to repeat over and over is there was a, a ceasefire before October 7th. No, there wasn't. You can't call it a ceasefire when... A, you literally bomb every once in a while. You just bomb Gaza. You just kill a bunch of people. You kill journalists. You shoot people like uh, the journalist Abu Akhla. Like, they, they call it mowing the grass, right? You just kill certain people in Gaza. That's not a ceasefire. But Israel claims that was a ceasefire. But it's also not a ceasefire when you control their water, so you're making everyone drink dirty water. You control their food, so they're all many of them are, are hungry or starving. You control their medicine, so many of them are dying from preventable diseases. That sounds to me like a war. Yeah, you're not killing them with bullets. You're killing them in other ways. I mean, sometimes they kill them with bullets, but pre-October 7th, you're killing them in a bunch of different ways. That's not a ceasefire. There was no ceasefire October 6th or whatever. In an unprovoked fashion, went in and did the massacre. Uh, the only- Unprovoked, unprovoked. Catch that? By the way, it sounds to me like all the evidence or much of the evidence we've seen is that Hamas broke into Israel to, yes, take hostages. And that doesn't mean I do endorse that. But that is different than the massacre that ensued. The massacre ensued because of the IDF. Outcome that will be acceptable is full dismantling of the Hamas terror state next to us. Otherwise, they'll do it again and again. The only outcome is full dismantling of Hamas. But what does full dismantling of Hamas look like to Israel? Well, it looks like ethnic cleansing. It looks like murdering and removing essentially every Gaza. And the full release of all hostages. But while children and... They've also been told to, to play up as if they care about the hostages. Israel does not care about the hostages. And in fact, many of the hostages' families are protesting Netanyahu in Israel. They have protests almost every day against Netanyahu and this far-right messianic cabal that runs the Israeli regime. There are protests against them by many family members of the hostages because the family members of the hostages know that they've been... Uh, that, that Netanyahu has no intention of getting the hostages back. He just wants to kill as many as possible. So- And women and innocent civilians are being killed while this goes on. Certainly the whole world, certainly I did, stood up when that happened on October 7th. But now we're talking about this happening in Gaza. You know- He has to pause because there's, he has to decide how to pivot away from that because he can't actually answer that. What about all the people dying in Gaza? Um, uh, new topic. Let me shift to, did I mention rape? Yeah, they can't actually talk about it. I hear a lot from uh, Hamas themselves that they're surprised by the unproportional uh, response of Israel. And I unproportional is a lovely euf euphemism for genocide. Like, it's not unproportional. Unproportional would be killing a bunch of uh, Hamas fighters that are not attacking you. And oh my God, they've killed all these Hamas fighters. They've killed 10,000 or 5,000. And, and meanwhile, only uh, 1,200 were killed on October 7th. Uh, that'd be disproportional. This is just genocide. Ask them, when you massacred uh, families, you burnt babies, you kidnapped kids. Uh, by the way, the burnt babies things has been debunked. No one's really come up with any evidence that shows that any of the people burned on October 7th were not burned by the IDF. Uh, yes, Hamas went in with guns, but they didn't just start build, burning down the buildings. You know why? Because they were in them. So all these burned bodies had a large percentage of Hamas, Hamas fighters in them because it was IDF tank rounds. And you have actual IDF tank gunners doing interviews. Uh, I played one of them weeks ago saying that they were told to fire on civilian infrastructure with civilians inside.
That's how you end up with everybody burned. And you murdered people in their homes on October 7th. What sort of response did you expect from Israel? What did you think? Did you think? I also love that, uh, resp that, that response of his. Basically, Hamas, what did you expect? Which is, so basically, you're, think, about, think about that as a, as a response. Of, you're committing genocide. What did you expect? We were, of course, going to genocide you. You're totally committing genocide. Well, we, what did you expect us to do? Obviously, we're going to commit genocide. That is not a defense. That is a terrible defense. That's a, like, if a, a serial murderer were on trial in a courtroom and you were like, you killed all these people. And his response was like, your honor, what did you expect me to do? Oh, good point. What did we expect him to do? Clearly kill all these people. I think we just lay back and do nothing. And I want to remind everyone that, you know, in, in Pearl Harbor, for example, when the Japanese attacked and killed 2,906 Americans, uh, ex excuse me, 2,306 Americans, the war went on for four years. Three million Japanese were killed, of which a million were uh, citizens. He, he talks about how many Japanese. It's like, it's like, OK, a few things. First of all, there was a legitimate war between the U.S. and Japan after Pearl Harbor, right? It was actually military forces fighting each other. On top of that, ultimately, there was the nuclear bombs drop, which many people have said correctly was a horror show and was not justified and was completely illegitimate. And if you actually go back and study the history and study the historical record, there was no reason the U.S. needed to kill hundreds of thousands of innocent people. And, and, you know, in, in uh, Hiroshima, they killed, I don't remember what it was, a few hundred, few thousand actual Japanese military. In Nagasaki, it was like 12. Like, it was a tiny number of actual military in Nagasaki that they just, they just murdered 100,000 innocent people. So he gives Pearl Harbor as an example of this being justified. The atom bombs were not justified. Japan was done. They were already going to surrender. They, they through back channels, they'd said multiple times that they would surrender if they, if, if the U S just let them uh, keep the emperor's title. So they, because the emperor was like religious to them, had a, the emperor had his title, then they could, uh, then they would do a full surrender out outside of that. And the U S refused because the U S actually wanted to send a message to the Soviet union about the power of the nuclear bomb. And if you really study the history, that's what it was. So he uses Pearl Harbor, and that is a terrible example to use. Here, we've already killed 13,000 terrorists. And yes, that's just a straight up lie. They have not killed 13,000 uh, Hamas fighters. Hamas is in the uh, tunnels, and they're, the bombs Israel's dropping, most of them are not. They're not, they're not tunnel busting bombs, most of them. Unfortunately, civilians are dying because Hamas uses them as human shields. But the, the human shields argument has been completely debunked. It's, uh, the, there's no more Hamas within civilian populations as there is IDF within Israeli civilian populations, right? The IDF is, guess what, throughout Israel, because most countries have military throughout their country. Uh, it's no, there's no difference. As if, as if any military just sits in one little part of the country and they're like if you'd like to bomb us this is where you bomb right here we're all the whole u.s military is just in poughkeepsie that's it it's just they all just we're all in poughkeepsie if you need to bomb us we'll be sitting in poughkeepsie so first of all that is not how that works at all but on top of that hamas is the government of gaza it's not just the militants it everything that is governmental in gaza is hamas so when they say, oh, Hamas is within the civilian population, that's like saying you're, you know, garbage, uh, the people that pick up your garbage or your city hall is amongst the civilian population. It's like, uh, yeah, I'd say the city hall is amongst the civilian population. What did they expect? But the people that are being killed are not members of Hamas. And the people, many of them can't even get humanitarian aid. And I think the, the whole world, or much of the world was on the side of Israel October 7th. But as this goes on, world opinion is saying two wrongs don't make a right. And, and clearly there's concern about what's going on in Gaza. The president of the United States, U.S. just announced a plan to help build a temporary pier on the Gaza coast in order to increase the flow of humanitarian aid to allow more shipments. By the way. So this is classic uh, MSNBC, Al Sharpton, bullshit propaganda. They're acting like the pier is a big deal. I already told you how it's the stupidest thing in the world. But on top of that, he shows video of this aid drop, which is just a photo op. It got so little aid to Palestinians, to Gazans, uh, compared to trucks. Just it got a tiny, tiny amount 
of the aid they need. But on top of that, the aid killed multiple people. Uh, I believe at least five. And in the footage that he shows, it's very hard to see, but in the footage he shows, you see that two of the aid packages don't, their parachutes don't open, or maybe they were shot by IDF. I don't know. But he's showing the moment that this aid dropped down and killed people. And he just mentions it as awesome. Look at Joe Biden helping people. But let's continue with MSNBC for a few minutes. So food, medicine, and other essential items that people in Gaza really need. How do you respond to those who say Israel has gone too far, killed too many people, is preventing aid to go into Gaza and in turn leading to the starvation of kids? No, Israel is not preventing aid from entering. Uh, aid is entering. The problem is that <laughs> this this may be the most ridiculous lies of the whole interview. Israel's not preventing aid for it. Israel's absolutely preventing aid from entering. It's not Gazans stopping the aid from getting in. This is a level of propaganda lies that's... Hamas, when the food enters Gaza, Hamas is siphoning it, blocking it, taking it, and then reselling it in the black market in order to make money. Uh, and they are, in fact, causing... Here's how you know, without even knowing anything, here's how you know this is lies. There are like a thousand, almost a thousand trucks of aid and food waiting on the Israeli side of the border, not allowed in. Like they're not getting in. If Hamas is stealing the aid, then they would be allowed in, right? Because Hamas has to get the aid to steal it to then sell it or whatever he's saying. They're on the Israeli side, hundreds of trucks. They're being blocked by Israelis. Some of them, sadly, are idiot civilians who just are like, I want to stop kids from eating food. Really, it's Israel, the government, that's stopping the aid from getting in. Problem. There's a lot of food on the Gazan side. The problem is distributing it because Hamas doesn't want to serve its own people. Hamas wants this disaster to inflate so it'll bring an end. <laughs> They want the disaster to inflate. Israel's literally bombing civilian infrastructure. Did Hamas do that? Did Hamas shut off all the power and all the food and all the water? Did Hamas do that from getting into Israel? Did, did Hamas bomb all these hospitals and other uh, infrastructure? Was that Hamas? Of course not. And to the war without the dismantling of Hamas. Look, Reverend Al, we cannot allow a terror state to reside on our borders. They are explicitly telling us right now can't allow a terror state. Well, then Israel is short for this world if we're not going to allow terror states. We're going to do it again and again. We're going to go in and massacre your, your families. We're going to go rape your women again. I can't. Was he talking about Israelis are going to do that? Or as, uh, yeah, that's that's true that Israelis are doing that. By the way, again, he's, he brings up the rape thing that's been at least so far debunked. But they know that's a good talking point. So. And again, we have no choice. Would you do anything differently? I, I certainly would be concerned since you asked me about would you do anything differently? Would Al Sharp to do anything? He's like, oh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't kill so many kids, I don't think. Women and children and people that are innocent here. And I think that there's people accusing the other side both of being terrorists. I think somebody's got to break this cycle. Uh, but, Reverend, I, I would not accept this uh, symmetry. I, I, I'm, I'm saying some people. I'm not uh, saying that. I, I, I'm saying that, yes, you were attacked. But some people calling both sides terrorists. Uh, yeah, buddy, Mr. Former Prime Minister, you are absolutely a terrorist. You're absolutely a genocidal war criminal. So, yeah, you can reject it all you want. It doesn't change the facts on the ground. Uh, you're 100% causing a genocide and killing innocent people.